what else were you looking at? New series uh, just arrived on Netflix, a six-part series called Clark, um, based on the, quote, truth and lies of Clark Olofsson's autobiography. Uh, do you, are you familiar with the story of Clark Olofsson? I am not. No, well, me neither, okay? So all new to me. Celebrity criminal, sounds like a weird thing, who was involved in the robbery heist in 1973, in second, which gave us Stockholm Syndrome. Okay. Okay, so the series is described as being, this is how the makers have described it, a fictional drama series that follows the man behind the expression the Stockholm Syndrome on his life journey as he fooled all of Sweden to fall in love with him despite several counts of drug trafficking, attempted murder, assault, theft and dozens of bank robberies. It's directed by Jonas Ackland, who uh, was a pop video director whose feature credits include that film uh, Lords of Chaos about the black metal scene starring uh, Rory Culkin and Polar starring Mads, do you want to say the name? Mads Megelson. Mads Megelson. Do you like rather brilliantly. Excellent. He also apparently started work on the Brian Epstein film Midas Man but was then replaced by Sarah Sugarman during the shoot. I don't know why that happened. So anyway, Clark, the central character, is played by Bill Skarsgård who was so brilliant as Pennywise the Clown in the recent cinema version of It. Of course, we you know you and I have talked before about how the television version of It with Tim Curry as Pennywise. You thought, wow, no one's going to be able to match that. And then, of course, he did. He did a, you know... And in many ways, the central character in this series is also a kind of evil clown, a larger-than-life figure who's drawn more than more from fairy tale than fact. Skarsgård has said that... Playing that he playing Clark for good or bad, he was one of Sweden's most colourful and fascinating individuals. I accept this challenge with, and this is a great phrase, with delight mingled with terror, and think that we can tell a groundbreaking story with a pa- with a pace and madness we may not have seen on TV before. Clark's life and history is so incredible and messed up that it would make even Scorsese blush. So the way he comes across in the series is. A compulsive offender who is very, very charismatic, spent a lot of time behind bars, also spent a large amount of time breaking out of prisons, unreliable. And the series makes clear that what we're seeing is his version of these events, only a small fragment of which may actually be true. And episode one is headlined, being the best at being the best was not my thing, so I decided to be the best at being the worst. And it opens with our anti-hero his first breakout escaping from his mother's womb, which pretty much sets the unruly tone for everything that's to come. And the series then keeps everything turned up to 11 in terms of the way it is stylistically. In this incarnation, he's he's like a Wild West hero. He's, 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 you know, he's a ladies man, I think is the phrase. He's a celebrity waiting to happen. And his reputation is enhanced when a colleague, for want of a better word, mounts a robbery in Stockholm and demands money, a car, and that Clark be brought to the site of the robbery. He's in prison. He doesn't know what's going on. But then he realises that suddenly he's got this chance to play the hero because the authorities and well, we have to get him because he's been asked for. They bring him to the bank and once inside the bank, he immediately sets about having, you know, a good time, which includes robbing the bank and seducing, in inverted commas, one of the hostages. And the tone of the piece is flippant and satirical. And remember we talked about Chopper. Chopper was recently, Andrew Dominic again, was recently reissued. And Chopper was based on and on Chopper's own account of his life. And in fact, he was, he was very, uh, it, it, he was the person who first suggested, you know, I'd like to be played by this guy because he has a comic background. And the whole kind of weird comedic tone of that, I mean, there's a bit of Alfie, there's a bit of Bronson in there, but for the most part, the tone of it is fantastically flippant. And it's only really in the finale, it's six uh, episodes long, slightly varying lengths. It's only really at the very end that the veil of the bravado comes off and we start to get something of you know self-awareness and a, and a, a, a realisation of the chaos that has been left in the wake of this life. But it's also worth saying that that realisation is pretty much the weakest part of the show because it does seem to me that, that what the director and the show itself is interested in is everything else. It almost feels like the kind of, you know, the moral at the end of the story of, oh, this, this is close to what was going on, sort of feels oddly tacked on. And it was... It's interesting because you know the Eddie Marzan thing, um, the thief, his wife, and the canoe. Yes. 
And the brilliant thing about that was that from the very outset, I mean, that's, that's very often very funny, very poignant, a lot of pathos. But from the very outset, the character that Eddie Marzan plays, the real life character, is on the one hand, you know, bumbling and foolish, and but he's also clearly manipulative and, you know, and gaslighting his wife and, you know, and being an abusive kind of predatory character. In the case of this, because the style is so zip zang boom, it's almost kind of lock stock in its in, in its visual style. I mean, there is some front loaded backstory about his, you know, the absence of his mother and his father being abusive, but even that sort of seems to be secondary to the, the, the most charitable way of saying it is that the that the series lives in the kind of fictional present of his version of his story. So it's self-aggrandizing and, you know, and funny and glamorous. And then it's only at the very end that it sort of becomes something else. Skarsgård is fantastic. I mean, he absolutely sinks his teeth into the role and he's just terrific. He, you know, he, he bristles with energy and it's a really electric performance. And I didn't know the story. And of course, while you're watching it, you think, how much of this is true? How much of this is just completely invention? How much of this is true? And it will send you back to reading, you know, okay, you know, this, this isn't. You can make an argument about it being uh, about celebrity culture, although, you know, equally Dog Day Afternoon, I think, did all of that stuff in a, in, in a kind of more a subversive way. But it's a great performance. But I think that the series itself, as I said, six episodes long, so I've spent quite a long time with, with this character. In the end, it is about surface. It is about the public image. It, it is about what it all looks like on the outside. And the, and, the, and the getting below that almost felt like an afterthought. And I think that, I mean, you know, it's, so therefore, it has that kind of slightly problematic thing that you think, what I want is for this to be delving deeper whilst it's doing this stuff, but it's not. What it's doing is giving you, this is a strange comparison, but it's a bit Wolf of Wall Street. You know, that thing about that you're being told somebody, you're being told the story of somebody by somebody who is just so full of themselves. Maybe you're being manipulated along with some of the other characters. Yeah. And where can I watch that? It's on Netflix now. All of them? Yes, apparently, all, yes. All the episodes. Uh, okay, so we would... Uh, we, that's the end of take one. And um, I feel as though uh, we deserve a drink, actually. <laughs> um, we would love to hear from you. Um, you send your emails, please, for uh, the next show, correspondence at com. 